dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the line, this is your song. And welcome, everybody, to another edition of, I'm going to guess I'm going to call it a 2A Media Workshop. I don't know what to call it. I'm going to be working on some cartoons. Uh, one of the projects I'm working on is the 2A History Project. I think I will uh, jump over to, since I'm screen sharing, I'll jump over to a website to share that with people. So um, got a couple of websites out there. One of them is called Minuteman University. It's a very simple website. There's not a lot of flash or anything to it. It's designed to offer two things, skills and resources for Second Amendment advocates and activists. So there's two sections of the website, the skills and the resources. The skills section is on building skill set and exploring creation of firearms content. And to some extent, everything we do here with uh, showing how the software works and the process of design and uh, implementation or distribution of finished product you know is designed to help people learn that stuff and get 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 into that but today we're going to be dealing with the content side or the i guess the resources side of it and on the resources side that's uh my goal to um to create um easier um that conception conception of whatever the word would be of uh the second amendment so uh this, I think, represents what, what I'm trying to say. Uh, I'm trying to put our Second Amendment history together, not just visually, but in a way that is relational. Uh, there's so many different ways to put many events together that can be confusing and can be um, difficult, and I haven't mastered any of that. So what I'm doing at this point is uh, gathering the data and uh, one of the things you see in this demonstration is uh, I can use these little cartoons once they're made in different ways visually. But as you'll see here in a second, another way I use the cartoons is just for some consistency. So in the resource section of the Minuteman University section uh, website is basically what I consider the 2A History Project. And again, the 2A History Project is this. I'm trying to combine all of our 2A history into something that's consumable and understandable, recallable or rememberable, and uh, useful. Because, uh, you know, hopefully it'll help us all know where we came from and the mistakes and, and the successes and the uh, frustrations and uh, the uh, optimism that I have. And hopefully it comes from a knowledge of where we come from and, and what we've gained. And even though we have losses, Got to look at both sides, and you got to appreciate what we've got, and we've got lots and lots of people on our side. So to help with the resource side, I've got the uh, history itself, which is a massive project. I've di divided it up, I guess, between the laws and the lobby, the, the, the people who are involved in various ways. So we've got the groups that people organize into. We've got the activists. We've got authors. We've got researchers, we've got radio hosts, podcasters, and attorneys, and this list can keep going. I've got firearms instructors, that's one I was working on the last couple of days. We've got the shooting sports and competition shooters, the opposite side, the gun control side, the, uh, I should say freedom control, but it would be confusing, uh, and then some other stuff. Uh, there's a gun debate library so that we can start to um, archive the various discussions and the arguments that work and don't work for all those discussions so the I can't say that I have a complete overall vision of what this is going to look like but to first gather everything there is to see what the elements are see what the parts are that's the that's the stage I'm in now so let's get into the gun rights lobby uh, uh, this again is a fairly simple website hopefully easy to navigate there's a section for the skill building which is the top part of the side menu here and then there's a section for the gun, or excuse me, the resources, right? And I guess that would consider all of this stuff, the resources. So what we're talking about today is the resources, and then specifically this section of the resources, which um, basically archives in, in district and has uh, the various groups of the, the gun lobby. 
So let's go to two-way activists. It's probably the largest one, the one I started with. I think it describes it best. You can see these have cartoons on them, and that's because as you, we flip through some other things, you'll see that some of these people from back in the day, there was no photography. So all we have are drawings or etchings, and you know, then we get some bad photographs of the, you know, the olden days guys, and then you get some various photographs and stuff. And then here's a photograph of uh, Marion who uh, you can barely even see what's going on in that photograph. And a lot of these people aren't necessarily figureheads. Now, Dave, probably that's a picture from, you know, some bio or something. So it's a, a, a decent picture, but you can't count on them all being decent. And it's probably copyright to just take a bunch of people's pictures, use, even if you're using them for research and, and education like this. So I'm creating these little cartoons. And uh, I've just been doing it. And uh, one of the side benefits is the art. I was able to show you there that diagram, uh, which I think is under just plain old 2A history. And again, to try to conceptualize or visualize all the different elements involved, I'm able to you know, wiggle these little cartoons around manageably uh, in uh, the software that I had been using. Uh, and then, uh, again, it gives it a bit of a consistent look on the page. I don't use every color in the rainbow. I just use a set of a maybe 20-something colors, so it ends up having... Well, what it takes to put a sound is I'm running off here. Well, I'm not trying to put a political message here. I mean, okay. it take nothing, but... Uh, so anyway, that's the the concept. Thanks to Earth for jumping in. I forgot that we've got uh, the open lobby, so I didn't mention that. I went live here on the big YouTube channel. Of course, I'm always broadcasting everything we do over on Gun Channels. back on so now I think we're back that's what wakes you up that's what keeps you alive of feedback or how it learn to love it anyway sorry about that I think I set everybody up to fail there so uh, I've got two chats open and I was just saying uh, we're over here on gun channels uh, this is the old chat that's going away today pass the word around uh, but over on gun channels we have channels and I have the uh, Minuteman University channel for projects like this for the two-way workshops and stuff so I've got the, the uh, shows over there but over on gun channels we also have dead horse uh is hosting a open discussion so uh dead horse and david and i are in a room a little bit further down gun channels right here and i'll make sure it's muted but now you can you'll start to see it with a delay the same thing we've been watching that's because we're i'm in this room and i'm also broadcasting right here so that's a little explanation of what's going on today um so again, appreciate everybody who joins us and deals with these weird things. I don't do this because it makes a bunch of money or because it's better for viewers. I'm doing this because I want people to understand that this is just a bunch of playing around. This is better than video games. This is just tech that we have at our disposal, and it's really useful tech. It's really effective at getting the word out there. And uh, I don't mind lifting the curtain a little bit to show people behind it if it's distracting and you know confusing. I suspect those people will just move along right? Like they're not interested in how things work anyway. But those of you that are interested in how things work, I hope you'll absorb a little bit of this when I and others go behind the scenes because uh, this stuff is super simple. And look, I'm trying to, uh, you know, get some things here and uh, anybody can do anything, but if we work together, we can accomplish a lot more. So I'm trying to, uh, I'm sloppy and I'm not uh, doing this off of some recipe or some script. But I appreciate the people that stick around in spite of all that, is I guess what I'm getting at. So we've only got a couple of people watching on either side, it looks like. Uh, so I'll shut up that this, I guess, is talking to the people in the future. Huh? So um, anyway, uh, I've got the cartoons going because it gives us some consistency here. Um, and then, um, I don't know, isn't there something like when you see something in a cartoon form? Like I, for some reason, I can remember a cartoon. It's something about our brains. You know, we're programmed to... McDonald's and Daffy Duck and all that stuff, you know, where I think our brains have been programmed to absorb cartoons. So 
I mean, I'm no cartoonist or nothing. I'm just taking an Adobe software program and uh, taking an image and scribbling some lines on it and then coloring it in like a coloring book. I'm doing nothing more than what we did in fourth grade, you know, when we were bored at school. Uh, it's just that I'm doing it with software. And then the end result gives me a more consistent uh, look for the, so for the project. And then when I do things like this, uh, um, whatever you call this, like infographic, I guess, maybe, uh, you know, it just gives, again, some consistency and hopefully some record, you know, sometimes you can't recognize people from pictures. I don't know what that word is. So uh, we're going through describing what we're doing today. So we're, we're creating some cartoons and uh, I had an opportunity last week, the week before 4th of July to uh, uh, head out to California. I knew somebody that needed something large delivered and I have a van, but, uh, the drive back and forth to California is close to 300 bucks and for, to deliver that thing was like 90 or something. So I ended up uh, trying to be creative, come up with a way to, to allow people to help uh, get some gas money in the tank. So I uh, started a thing over on our store, which is uh, gearwebsites.com. And I'll jump over to there now. So on gear websites, uh, if you head to gear websites, uh, it's our store. We have uh, these cartoons we have playing cards we have patches and other stuff that we've either create here in Tucson or have made for us uh, it's almost all original and our stuff is ideally supposed to be a little subtle I mean maybe a bayonet isn't subtle but uh, things like the spam cam patches and the every second matters some of our ammo stuff even gun channels uh, doesn't scream gun it's not in your face so it allows you to wear it in more places and just you know have it at the office or something or school Anyhow, if you go under uh, products and then down to services, I'll put another entry in here so it's a little easier to find. Uh, you'll find some of the things that we offer, like cartooning vehicles or cartooning people. Uh, we normally offer that for 50 bucks. Like if you came up and said, I want a picture like Ellis, if he would have said, he didn't he didn't pay for this, I did this for him. But uh, if he would have said, hey, can you make a cartoon of that picture, I would have said, hell yeah. And then draw this cartoon, I would charge 50 bucks for that. And you could say that's unreasonable or not. But if you had a vehicle like this cool, uh, badass four wheel drive van, you want a cartoon of it? No problem. You want a little color in, or coloring book version of it? It's part of the process. So that's not even a problem. There you go. That would be 50 bucks. So you're not getting anything out of it. Instead, you're supporting a project. So I created this extra one called Sponsor a 2A Activist Cartoon. And the idea here is that instead of like the other cartoons where you're getting something in return, you know, you're getting a cartoon made of something specific or anything really. Uh, these are 2A cartoons for the project. So I sort of went through and if we go to something like authors maybe, we'll see that there's fewer pictures in this one. You know, there's some gaps here. Like I don't, well that guy, I don't have a picture of because I don't know what he looks like. Uh, but if we get to the end here, you'll see there's a bunch of people towards the end of some of these lists that I just don't have pictures of yet. And I don't have all the time in the world. So, uh, you know, drawing these cartoons is, again, not necessarily a profit-driven thing. It's just a, a, a suspected, it might, be, it might be useful type of thing. And I got a lot of these that are photographs. So if we go to the uh, firearms instructors, I just added a bunch of them recently. And these are, again, sort of like my notes as I build the, the project here. But most of these are just pictures, you know, they're photographs. So the idea is to uh, get rid of this inconsistency. You know, they're always doing different things or stand in places. Sometimes they're dark, sometimes they're light, sometimes they're inside or outside. They're wearing hats and not, you know, some of that stuff I can equalize or, um, you know, get more uniform in the uh, cartoon process. So, anyhow, that's what I uh, came up with over at the store here so that you can sponsor one of these cartoons over here. Just a way to throw 20 bucks at me and then I don't have to send you anything. And uh, it gives me some time to do what I'm about to do right now. So I have a list here, and I just started putting people in there that I knew were needed in the project. And I think a couple of them are already grabbed, and those are the ones we'll be drawing today. And uh, anyway, if you want to grab one uh, to again, participate in this in a different way, then there's the link, and I'll drop that in the uh, YouTube sides. I drop it on this one since in the lobby asked for this. My work will pay for my college, but I have only a list of schools to pick from. Okay, my work will pay for all my college, but I only have a list of schools to pick from. Is there any degree I could get that could later be applied to help with the second in my free time? That's an awesome question. So Dead Horse and Kingpin are over here. 
Are you guys both in with just two accounts? There's not like two different people on here besides us, right? In the lobby. I don't know yeah, I should just be on one. Okay, I see two in there, so I just double checking. So there's uh, Kingpin and Dead Horse are in Dead Horse's lobby over here on Gun Channels, and I'm on the uh, both, I suppose. So I don't know if you guys heard, I was just reading a comment from Garrett over on the YouTube side on, on my side. It's saying uh, he's asking, I don't know if you heard the question or not, uh, he's going to get his college paid for by working afterwards, like, you know, so he's not worried about paying for it, I guess. Um, but he it says, but I only have a list of schools to pick from, so I'm not sure what that is. But uh, is there any degree I could get that could later be applied to help with the Second Amendment in his free time? A good lawyer? Question. Oh, man. Holy moly. I was thinking, like, artist or, like, like marketing, and then, yeah, you went right to the, the throat. No, that's that's actually probably, I don't want to say vital, but that's certainly strategic, right? Like, that's uh, that's going right to the big guns. The point well, of, and most, uh, the, most congressmen and senators, if you look at what their uh, or what their degree is in, uh, it's a law degree. Yeah, you're right. Because in order to be some of those positions, you have to have at least, like, a bachelor's or a master's degree. And uh, they're all law degrees. So if you want to be a politician, dead horse stole my answer. Now I'll wait and see what Garrett says because that's obviously a good answer. But I mean that's a that's a that's an occupation that. Man, I don't know. I mean, would you guys ever consider being head of ever? Would you have ever considered being a lawyer, assuming you're not already a lawyer? Yeah. So one of the problems that he may face if his company is paying for his college is it may have to be work related. You know, like if uh, you work in a hospital and the hospital is going to pay for your college, you know, you got to be teaching like, nursing to different classes or something like that. Oh, yeah. I see. I read it differently. I figured he meant like whatever he does, he'll pay for his own college. So you're thinking more like he's going to do some kind of work to or school for work type of thing where they pay him to go to school. He goes to a career that pays for him to go to school, like that kind of program. Yeah, I went, I went to the hospital for a while and they had a tuition reimbursement, but it had to be related to the, to the field that you were in. That makes sense, but I'm, I'm going to see what he says over here. Like, I can go to any degree, but my work picks my school. Oh, okay. So it sounds like what you're talking about then. I never did anything like that. Did you guys go to college? Out of high school? I did not go to college. I went. You broke up. You went what? Ice cream school. I went instead. I did a little bit of community college and then ended up getting a pretty sweet job so I stopped going. I did two years at community college and got my associates and got out actually a little less than two years. So besides lawyer, is there anything else? Well, I think lawyer leads into the politician thing, but you could you could say politician by uh, getting a political, what is it, political science degree, right? So you can just go straight, right, you know, into being a politician or a lobbyist or, you know, anything like that. We definitely need more people like that, I think. Yeah, that would be another option. Well, being a lobbyist, That's, I mean, uh, politician in California right now named Tamika Hamilton, and uh, she's the first uh, African American woman Republican 
like pro gun running for office in like California, and uh, we get like a congressional seat or something to follow on her on social media. And like we need more people like her. Like she's former army. She's like you know the patriot. Like just like totally compared to like the other choices. I mean like she's gold. So we need just more people like her. Is politician a career? I guess going to, like you say, there's, there's. Oh yeah, there's politicians in the void, and that's all like the Clintons and stuff have ever done. But then let's say Garrett threw twenty bucks in there. Appreciate that, Garrett. You got more money than cents, I think. But thank you. Um, uh, literally, Garrett's like every dollar I'll make this month off of YouTube is from Garrett. So appreciate that. Um, if you're a lobbyist and he was asking what can you know if you get let's say that they send them to lobby school or whatever that would be political science or something and then uh you know let's say it's the chicken industry and they send them out to do put chicken lobbying uh they're not is that something that you're allowed to then go lobby something else on your free time you know what i mean is that like some conflict thing like uh i don't know some jobs have like not maybe ethical but like even like a contract type of stuff like you know we paid you to go to school you can't just go use that for some organ you know for some other thing like you can go do whatever you want in your hobby but you can't use our that skill set i don't know if that's a occupational thing or if that would just be like a company thing like a company policy or if there's like certain jobs that'll you know you kind of assume that's the way it is but like a lawyer they don't have that right a lawyer can be a lawyer for let's say business or something and then on the side be a lawyer for social issue nobody really cares i mean there might be some feedback or kickback or something right but there's no like legal issue there i don't think but i'm not a lawyer no i think you could definitely branch out as a lawyer in a couple of things and well if you had your law firm or something you could specialize in family family law and and then do something completely out in your spare time. But I think going. You got to pay the bills. The bills pay while you're out there saving the world, right? I mean, you didn't give us any kind of direction or focus at all. So we're just going with anything, right? But I would think pretty much I could see value in any career field that you find interesting, right? Any pursuit, because literally anything you do, as long as you've got a Second Amendment mindset, then at least you're there to be a rock in the water. So it's not just a whole bunch of yes men. Or whatever right like so you know if they're gonna make like some subtle thing in a movie and they don't even realize it then maybe you could be the person that says hey you know this doesn't need to be there or maybe in like some presentation they refer to something that's dumb and you're like oh, wait a minute let's not put that in there and then you affect you know some companies um, you know marketing or some companies uh, next uh, I don't know how to be or even a manual or something like that. how often do you read something and it just says like assault weapon for no reason and it's you know talking about some other thing because they just don't care about 2a so if you had somebody in almost any job you know with a focus on 2a it's going to be beneficial and even if it's just discussions in a workplace i mean it might not seem like a lot but isn't that the kind of stuff that changes society and culture and whatnot you know when a bunch of people are around the water cooler and like I'm so glad they want to get rid of that and i'm so glad they want to buy back all the guns you know if there's somebody there to lend a little bit of reason so that they I'll just have free reign. But okay, so here's who he follows up with. I work for Boeing, so I it, so it's fully paid. I can leave after the degree, but they will pay me like forty thousand to stay for any four year degree and a hundred thousand if I stay and complete six years. That's super interesting. So that sounds like a company that wants to see their own employees succeed so they're offering sort of a, a school fund compensation project option um, and then they'll so they're educating you as part of your current employment it sounds like if I understand this and then since you're gonna get up trained if, if you'll up train into something that stays with them then 
they give you a bonus, and then if you stick around even longer, you're getting a bigger bonus. I mean, I can't imagine not working for Boeing. Being an engineer, something like that. I mean, there's so many things you could be working for, too. Like, imagine if you were doing software development or something, and you could take that skill set out to, you know, a project that's valid that needed some kind of tech. Sounds like that's the, the way it works. Man, that sounds like a really cool deal. So with that focus, what do you guys... I mean, it doesn't sound like lawyer or politician would really be appropriate for what he's doing. I'm assuming it's a good place to work, and I would shoot for that bonus for sticking around for six years in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> sure. well, it's kind of like what you said earlier. Like, uh, I've owned boots for six in years. Career, like, right? shit. <laughs> we just sit there and just talk to people. Just yeah. their voice. And, <clears throat> and just even what, talking to one new person a week, right? I might be crazy, but I can't imagine Boeing being anti gun as far as like a general... Thing. Like, I would assume those are people that are at least open-minded and stuff, but I guess I, I'm assuming. I don't know. And here's the thing. Boeing needs lawyers as well. That's definitely true. And that would be the kind of law that, what would they care if you went and did something to fight Bloomberg on the side? Because you're going to be working with, uh, well, I can't even imagine. They're going to have all kinds of lawyers for all different kinds of things. Patent pursuits and following up with like contract things and then all, of course all the liability and people losing luggage even you know all kinds of crazy stuff so yeah they probably have a bank of lawyers but do you think that boeing has them or they just hire a lawyer team you know a lawyer company they probably have to have some in-house to make sure their lawyers that they're paying for are doing the right thing yeah kind of what i was thinking is they would have some form of in-house but then also have firms that they hire to do stuff as well. You guys see my, got lawyers and retainers. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, if you do. Yeah, does that look all right? I mean, it doesn't have color yet. Looks kind of like me. Pretty much all gun owners look the same, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, I've done them like 17 times and they all looked weird. But it's funny you know somebody that, you know what I mean? Like if I'm drawing somebody I don't even know, no big deal. But I've met him, so it's a little weird. Hey, G, can I ask you a question? Sure. What happened to knives? What do you mean? Well, he just, you mean as far as the lobbies? Yeah. I mean, he'd been doing the lobbies for a long time. Anybody remember how long he's been doing them? Two years? More? Every single day. So, I mean, I don't know. I think there was some issue with, like, what was going on and people. And then, you know, there was, like, stuff happening as far as, like, without calling people out, like, just stuff. So that had to be dealt with. And then, uh, and that doesn't happen very often. It's only happened six times in the whole time of gun channels. It just happened to be an issue that, you know, he was in, I guess, involved with. And then it was just too stressful. You know, people aren't doing this for the money. They're doing it because they want to engage with other people out there. And when that becomes stressful or, you know, non-positive, I, I don't want to speak for him, but I imagine it was the stress of, dealing with it and he didn't create the situation at all he just trying to do a lobby right but uh yeah, i don't know dead horse has been in more of the chats than i have he might have more insight but i haven't gotten any direct feedback from eyes other than he's still around he jumps in the chats i haven't seen him that's why i asked yeah i asked well even when he was running the shows he would be around and then he had he wasn't just his time wasn't his own he had yeah you know he had uh, what much i say like chores and stuff to do he had things he was doing around the house and stuff so he'd be gone for stretches all the time right i was involved in a bunch of his lobbies during the day and then all of a sudden he just disappeared and there were no more lobbies anymore i kind of wondered what happened you know 
Well, and that's a, on the bigger picture, you know, Gun Channels is six years old. I've been doing this on YouTube since nine or ten. We've been doing the live stuff since 12. I've been on the internet since 97, doing websites and doing stuff. I started getting uh, clients and doing full-time internet work in like 2000. Started gun channels or gun websites in 2004. And uh, since 2004, I've been full-time doing gun stuff online. By 2005, I had started attending training classes and understood there's so many facets to this community that many of them aren't even touching each other. And then by 10, and I started to experience the Gun Rights Policy Conference for the first time. And then in 13, to experience the politicians no longer in fear of us. You know, after 94, we lived in a long time of peace because the politicians were, were feared the consequences of touching 2A. Well, they had that fear no longer with Obama, and uh, after they could exploit what happened in uh, Connecticut, uh, they came after us, and after seeing the community and then the ability of the Internet to adapt and, and bring us together, um, you know, there's there's been waves, there's been trends, there's been back and forth, there's been way too many dead ends, you know, branches of the tree that have failed. Um, there's good ideas, there's bad ideas. Unfortunately, there's a few bad ideas that have become really successful um, in spite of, you know, what seems like a bad idea. There's been great ideas that failed. So in the grand scheme of things, Knives Chats were awesome. He, he did something, he created something for people that many, many people were able to participate in. But again, that wasn't built on a, on a, on a strategy of, you know, of a business plan or anything. It was just a happening. So like a conversation that can be epic on a bus somewhere or like a, a gun shop that has just a something going on and every Wednesday people show up and it's epic. You know, those kind of things can happen. They're not planned. There's no way to create it. You just have to understand it for what it is and appreciate it, I guess is the word for what, you know, for what it is. And, uh, and thanks Knives for creating it. But we can't assume that anything. I mean, YouTube is about to change again. They've changed fundamentally of three or four times along the way, you know, that it's affected us as a community. We always scar up and get stronger from it. Um, so I don't want to see Knives leave or nothing, but it's totally understandable. And I hope that you and everybody else who's aware of what happened there and the, the way that they've been seeing these things stick around. It, there's no win. There's no end where it's all, everybody sits back and rests and watch TV for the rest of the time. Like it's going to constantly be a struggle and an effort and there's constantly going to be awesome things that just end. And that's super frustrating, but I don't know how the hell we harness uh, optimism and uh, focus through all that. But I suspect we're getting better at that because more people are aware of those things. We're able to archive them. And uh, as people experience those they hopefully will get hardened to them and stick around. You know, as the, the stuff was happening the first or second time around, people left, like some really good people left. I don't know if that'd be an interesting topic for a discussion sometime. Talk about people who had online presences that are now gone. It's one of the reasons I'm doing the 2A History Project. There's some stuff like um, uh, concealedcarry.org. It's awesome, it was epic. That should have stuck around forever. And the things that have replaced it since our attempts, but they're, they've, none of them have come close, and that was just one guy. It's, I don't know if that was a good answer or not, but I can't tell you what Knives is doing in his head. No, I was, like I said, I was just kind of wondering if anybody knew what really happened, because all of a sudden, just gone. I think also when he's, you know, Night Dead Horse was able to fill in, I think that was know a comfort he was able to take a break he's, again he's been doing this for a long time and it's not all i mean we they had us we had a thing set up you could buy those stickers and you'd get 20 bucks or whatever i think 240 bucks ever you know so 240 bucks so two years worth of daily chats certainly wasn't a monetary thing and honestly he'd have in the first couple of times i sent him 20 bucks he would just send it right back to me so he certainly didn't keep anything he was doing it for the love of it and if the, and if it, the thing that you love so much, gets weird or, to, you know, to be difficult, you gotta, you know what I mean? Like, what the hell? You can't, you can't make people do the same thing all the time, and that would be boring anyway. You know, so sometimes it just gets to be too much. 
Okay, now we're going to switch topics on you again, because I know you know somebody else that I've been kind of paying attention to. Hosh Nazi. 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 Not Nazi. Yeah. Nazi. Right. <laughs> what about him? You're friends with him as well? Oh, yeah. I, I'm getting into the ham radio thing. Right on. So I've been watching him. And then uh, there was some mention of UN uh, gun channels and some other stuff through him. Yeah, he's been on gun channels since the beginning. He was active in the conversations that created gun channels over on YouTube in the years, you know, in he, all through 13, he was around. I met up with him first, I think, in 12 when he was a friend of Haas, a friend of mine that uh, introduced me to him. And then, uh, well, anyway, so yeah, he uh, does the Ham Rah Radio Crash Course now. That's his main focus, I think. Well, I know it. Yeah. And that's, I've been watching him because, like I said, I'm getting into the Ham Radio idea um, for. Uh, I don't know how to explain it without sounding like some kind of uh, crazy lunatic out on the fringe. Well, ham has always been for people that are either interested in exploring options or like concerned about having options, right? So. Yeah, I'm the more concerned about having an option if something should happen. Well, Not that I'm saying something's going to happen, but if something does happen. Oh, no, I agree with you. And in a world where people have gone from, remember, like, flip phones and texting with numbers and stuff to like, you know, the first smartphones and however many browsers you've dealt with. And now we're about to go from Google Hangouts to something new. And I guess I can't really complain about email. They've been pretty consistent emails over the years. But you know what I mean? Like we're human beings that adapt to tech all the time. And uh, ham radio is maybe like twice as hard as YouTube, honestly. You know what I mean? Like it's not that difficult in the grand scheme of things. It's not complicated math or anything. Just to remember a few things. So once you got the basics, you don't even have to have a ham radio to, to have accomplished knowing the skills, right? So I think there's value in pursuing that just as a skill building exercise. And like you say, there's benefits if something does ever happen or just, I mean, so many, so many different things. Like you're hiking somewhere and the only way you can, you get to some building or something, the only thing in it's a radio, you know? Knowing how to operate it is simple. And then you're not stuck there. Right. I, I'm old school, old school, that I go back to the brick phone. Before there was text messaging or any of that fun stuff. And I have one of the latest and greatest of Android smartphones now. Who 
were you drawing there, Deep? This was Yuda. Go back to her a second. So now I've just taken the file and my roboting, like it's, it's freezing up here, so I might be roboting everywhere. Um, I took the file. Oh, you're Yeah, whenever it works, it shuts my computer down, basically. I got a lot of stuff running. All right, so um, I just I drew it, right? So I have the picture here on one layer. These are the layers over here. I got a whole bunch of different layers. Like one of the layers is this stuff to create the card that it'll eventually be on. But until then, I've got the picture. And I took that picture and I dropped the opacity, I think they call it, down to 42%. So I'll bring that back up so it's regular again. And now I'm going to grab the picture, copy it, and then uh, drop this back down a little bit in case I have to work on it. And then I'll paste the picture. Okay, paste the picture. Stick it over here. Scroll over a little bit so I can see it. And then I'll hit crop the image because I don't need the whole thing. And I'll get rid of most of it there. And then apply, and I'll leave that one there. And then these are actually two pieces on that layer, so I can make each one of them disappear individually. And then I'll lock this so I don't screw with it. And I'll turn back on the color and then the lines. I put those on as two different layers. And it's just so that when you draw the lines, if you put them on the layer above here, then the colors can be underneath the lines. You don't worry so much about drawing within the lines you can draw under the lines it makes it a little easier uh, and then this guy will just sit over here to be the comparison picture because not that I'm great but that helps compare what's going on there and then uh, so I originally had saved it like this just to save a picture and you'll see that in a second now I'm going to turn this piece back on and I'll save this again and you can see somewhere in here there's the one I did of you, you, you know the first time, and then this is the one that I'll uh, do the second one. So I click on it, and that basically puts the same name down here. And now I can just add to the name and go, I don't know, compare or something to give it a different name. And now it'll save a second one. But if you notice, that is a little tiny picture with a big white space next to it. So something's going on over there. I got to go fix that. So I'll hit export anyway, and now it exports. <coughs> But I got to go fix whatever's going on with that image. So this one probably exported the same way. I'm gonna scroll way out, grab the selection tool, and go over here and just select like everything I can over here. If I can get my mouse to work. Oh, I got everything locked. So if I unlock everything, turn it back on. So I don't need everything turned back on. Okay, turn those things back on. Now I try to select over here. I'm gonna find something over here. So it finds that little tiny dot for no reason. I'll just delete that little dot. Now I can go back and lock this stuff down so it doesn't get screwed with. I'll lock everything actually. I can try to get back over here. Okay, so somehow I got Charlie Hook Cook's picture in there. Get rid of that. I got Masada Yub's picture in there. I don't need that. So I want to uh, first do this picture by itself again. So I'll just export it, export as, go back to where I had it, and it was this one that's all goofy, right? So if I were to preview this one, it looks stupid. It looks like for no reason it has this big white space what's going on for no reason it has this big white space because there's just some dot over here i guess so we got rid of that dot i'll just click it to rename it to that file it'll overwrite it'll verify click ok now i'll take and put that little picture back on so they have that compare picture and i'll export and now we'll see that the first picture is normal again and now when i click on this to change it it'll say you want to copy it i'll say if you want to copy over it, I'll say yes. 
And now we've got that picture in a normal ratio. It looks to be a small rectangle. Now you know more. You can tap the bell. <coughs> so let's see. I came in late. What's going on with the knives? Yeah. I'm with you. It's good stuff to know just in case. Yep. And then let's see if we got anybody chatting on the on channel's lobby side. Uh, the Bellians are saying I went to school for auto technician. Man, I can't even imagine not being able to use that somewhere, right? I mean, I guess if you got some school and like crazy custom car, that might not apply. But even then, if you were like a crazy custom car company mechanic, you'd probably get a job anywhere, right? Because they're they can't afford that on or you know they wouldn't be able to find that on. All right, so that was Yuda, and then I think we got a couple more to work on here. So let's see if we can find out who grabbed Yuda. I don't remember who grabbed Yuda. So maybe. Yes, so Tim is the one that grabbed Yuda. He also grabbed Liberty Doll, who we did the other day. So uh, thanks for that. The Liberty Doll video is already made. I don't know if I posted it yet, but it'll now be posted, or it will be posted soon if it ain't. Digging back in, next up will be from Psycho Camp. Grabbed a couple, thank you. And... I don't know which one to mute, so sorry, I didn't get to mute both of them. Um, yeah, Rob Pinkett, and Masadi, if anybody got a uh, preference, I'm going to do first. Let's see. Go back over here, and this is what we're talking about. The uh, Gear Website store, gearwebsites.com, is where we have a store, so that's one of the ways that we help keep our projects online. Ideally, we'd like to see our projects grow. So uh, we have a store because we're capitalists, and we like to use uh, uh, capitalist things to make money. And uh, my goal isn't to create content that appeals to so many people that I can put an ad on it and make money off the slight percentage of people that are going to click on that ad. That's a valid way to create content and to fund it, but I'm not interested in doing it that way. So I've got a store over there, and we've got different things, including the playing cards. Uh, we've got a deck of cards. The first deck we did was uh, AK-47 identification based off of an airplane identification, so uh, black and white silhouettes uh, and completely done in the a, a, like in a version of a, a Vietnam era uh, aircraft identification deck. And then uh, our second deck was the Old West guns, went down to Tombstone, got inspired to do a deck on the uh, guns because the decks of cards being sold as souvenirs to the tourists there were boring, stupid, super dumb. So uh, we made uh, some interesting, interesting-ish looking. I'm not saying they're the best deck ever, but it's uh, each card on the deck has a different gun, and that got us to the next step, which was the third deck we made. All of these decks are made in USA. Two of them are made in Texas. One of them is made in Tennessee. We only make them in states that begin with the letter T. Um, the third deck was the inventors, and the inventors are using cartoons like this that we drew, and we did that um, pretty much all live. Uh, so we did the research for those cards live, and we did the drawings live. It's an effort to teach people these software packages and uh, and to talk about the, either the inventors or, in this case, the uh, the people. So we didn't really talk about Yuda there, but the last person we were drawn there was Yuda, the Pew Pew Jew, uh, one of the people that participated in the 2A Patch Batch earlier this year. He's an author. He just wrote a couple of books. One just came out, 27 Words, uh, Kids, Introduction to the Second Amendment. But he writes books for kids, for youths, and uh, his first were like the ABCs of gun tech terminology or something for kids, and then the first one was, uh, okay, I can't remember the name of the first one. So the first one, though, was his uh, book for basically teaching kids about guns at a young age, uh, an alternative to the Eddie Eagle kind of stop, drop, and roll 
bullet points. His was more of a book that you could read to a kid and uh, get some interaction and some feedback with the kid about guns. So anyway, Yuta's is pretty cool. He also works at a gun shop. He's also an activist. He uh, chats quite a bit on uh, two-way topics, gets people motivated, and his t his channel is Pew Pew Jew. So uh, obviously coming at it from the uh, the Jewish perspective, and then uh, I'm hoping I think his goal is to motivate as many uh, Jewish gun owners to get vocal and to get two A as possible. And then I would be amiss if I didn't uh, talk about his shirts because he's also pretty funny. And he has a bunch of humorous shirts out there. One of the better shirt companies I know, in fact. Never screwed me over. He doesn't disgrace American flags that I know of. And uh, he's a cool dude. And he's in Texas. Best Texas t-shirt company I know. So uh, that's Yuda. And that was Chris who uh, requested that one. Actually didn't request it. He sponsored it. He paid 20 bucks to have that cartoon drawn. I'm doing them live like this in a hangout so that there's something to do. Right, you can watch something so that there's a conversation to be had. Dead Horse is supplementing this with a live lobby. He's taking a computer, turning it on, setting up the account, and pointing it at uh, YouTube and gun channels, leaving the links out there. So if you'd like to participate and chat with us, feel free. Kingpin's in here, Dead Horse is in here. They might not be at the microphones right now. I am back and forth between the microphone and doing like stuff. <laughs> Right on. So uh, we do have permission to play podcasts. Uh, I have permission to do uh, Liberty Dolls podcasts or Riding Shotgun with Charlie or Gun Rights, Gun Freedom Radio or uh, Out of Order with James Kalita or Ken Blanchard. So anybody in that list, we could listen to some podcasts, listen to some interviews. Um, if you're watching this, if you're uh, in the audience then you're not in the audience this isn't a movie this isn't a television this isn't a newspaper you're not a reader you're not a viewer even you're a participant in this conversation so you can choose to be a participant or not but you're certainly able to be a participant so we've got chats going on the uh, gun channel side uh, and on the youtube side on both of these chats so you could be on the gun channel side chatting in the live lobby. You could be on the Gun Channel side chatting in Minuteman University. I see Night Strikes out there. Little green dot on gun channels. Uh, then we've got uh, the YouTube side. So the tool that we're using to facilitate this thing is, is a live hangout on, uh, for me at least, a live hangout on the Chrome browser. And uh, that's right here. And it's just me in here. And I'm screen sharing to that screen. That's why it looks weird right now. And uh, I've got that browser open, the Google Chrome browser, and then I've got stupid Internet Explorer shitty browser over here, being all clunky, not working good. And eventually I'll jump over, and that's where Kingpin and Dead Horse are, and that's Dead Horse's lobby that I just mentioned. So you can get in two lobbies, just get two browsers and jump in. I'm on this, I guess I'm not on the same account, but I could be on the same account with two different browsers. Anyhow, if you want to be part of the conversation, jump on the panel. That horse supplies the links over on gun channels. And uh, if you want to participate in the conversations out here on the YouTube side, go for it. The gun tube said something, then he restricted it. Oh, I see. Um, working on gun tube, I imagine. He's over there uh, with the gun tube logged in. So I don't know if we answered Garrett's question for 20 bucks. I feel like uh, we should do more of a dance for his question there. But man, it's such a. Can you imagine? Oh, I'm assuming y'all are both old like me. You were starting over at some age where you're looking forward at a degree and then a term of service with an employer. What, would, what direction would you have gone? I think today I that would be hard to not go engineering. There's just so much to do in engineering, so much uh, new tools and new development. Every time they come up with new tools, they figure out new ways to build stuff. So. Tech stuff is neat, and I certainly enjoy stupid software crap like this because it creates useful product, right? But in some respects, I'm just using other people's tools and things. In engineering, you can build tools. You can build actual stuff, right, like three-dimensional things, and that's that's I feel that's way more fun than uh, just the flat two-dimensional stuff we get online. And with 3D printers and, oh man, just extruders and that carver thing, right? Like cutters. Wait, Molly, 
can't imagine what fun you could have at a big company doing engineering. And then just not even engineering, I guess running machines. There's got to be college level stuff on running machines, right? Especially at a place that's making crazy complicated and crucial parts. This place says gun tube is coming along. So it must be working on it over there. Uh, my Bitcoin register isn't filling up. So I have a Bitcoin wallet over on GunTube, and it's not filling up. So if you could fix that. I thought I was supposed to have like four or five Bitcoins by now. 3D printers that can print metal. Yeah, exactly. For sure, use my knowledge. I learned to fix my own stuff, save myself hundreds of bucks, and got certified in a lot of things. Yeah. And here's the thing, I don't know, did, I don't know if these guys are back or if they're walking around or what, but um, I have these books called How Things Are Made, How Things Work, I think. And uh, they're kind of like, they're for kids or whatever, but they kind of like were exploded drawings with a little bit extra. And uh, so you could just see what's inside of stuff. And I always thought those were cool. So I, I don't know, when I was a kid, I decided I'm not going to own nothing unless I know how it works. And... Uh, you know, just at least to some level know what's going on so that it seems magic to you and then yeah it seems a lot different right? looks like a lot of solutions instead of a lot of problems that way I don't know if it's my mouse or if it's YouTube acting weird. It's probably my mouse. Click on the wrong button. It's probably not aimed at anything anymore. Oh, I should probably go through that and write that mouse test. I forgot about that. I'm going to do a mouse test here. How do you do that? Control panel. Where's mices? How do you do this click thing? That I like. I'm gonna go a little bit lower. I'll leave it there. And then, isn't there a way to do like a thing where you have to click a bunch of stuff and it just calibrates, or is that Macintosh? Let's just do the touchpad. It must be Macintosh. Oh crap! I can't show you my mouse, but my mouse has five like gears on it. Um, uh, and when I have it on this setting, I'm okay, but if I drop it to this setting, like I, need, I don't even know where the mouse is anymore, but if I go to this setting, holy moly, look at that, and let's start drawing again. So nobody said, so we're going to do this out of here, I guess. So we'll move this out of here again. If you want to grab one, I'll drop the link, because I'm a capitalist, and if you want to help support what we're doing, you can uh, buy stuff when we get my mouse to where I can actually move it again, and uh, I'll drop this. Boom. And I'm going to drop my straight because I maybe know that this is the chat. I'm sick of talking, so I'm going to go find a podcast to listen to, and I'll start drawing Masada You here. Why don't we listen to a Masada You podcast? That'd be pretty cool. Uh, I already listened to Shiny Chocolate with Charlie with Masada You. Um, let's see if um, Gun Freedom Radio has to talk to him. So, Gun Freedom Radio is a cool podcast based on. Oh, I'm at the wrong place. I need to go to their website. Uh, they're out of uh, Avondale, I think, which is actually Phoenix. They just act like it's not. And uh, that's the U.S. side of Phoenix on your way to California. They have a really, really, really cool gun shop. I know them and they're friends of mine, but I tell you what, I have been to a lot of gun shops, and their gun shop is awesome. Um, their podcast is also awesome. It's an indication of how the professional they are on stuff. Let's see if we can find the side. 
unfortunately they're doing stuff all over the place so they haven't um been posting new podcasts which is frustrating mm, let's see speaking of good gun shops i found a new one. Oh yeah what's that it's called bass and bucks it's uh they they've got an outdoor shooting range on site plus an indoor shooting range on site plus guns galore and they have a 750 yard indoor long range outdoor okay they're indoors only 50. Okay. but 750 is nothing to sneeze at no uh-uh i i like it take some of the guns that I have and stretch them out. And because of that, I just bought 300 rounds of 308. But at 38 cents a round, can't beat it. I can't find this on you, the Gun Freedom Radio. Anybody have any other suggestions that somebody to listen to from Gun Freedom Radio? You got any Alan Gottlieb? I bet you they do. Volume 7. This will be an old one from 2017. Let's see what Alan says. It's different. So this is interview series, episode 90, volume seven, episode 93, getting ready for GRPC 2018. It's like it's uh, getting off of their YouTube. So I'll just jump over their YouTube. So this is a 15 minute chat with Gun Freedom Radio, Alan Gottlieb and somebody else here. We'll find out. And we inform. We're... Here we go. Welcome to Gun Freedom Radio, where we engage, we educate, and we inform. We're sponsored by azfirearms.com, the biggest little gun shop in Arizona. I am your host, Cheryl Todd, and I am very excited today to be speaking <coughs> with Mr. Alan Gottlieb. Now, Alan is the founder of the Second Amendment Foundation, the SAF a lot of us know it by. And Alan is here today to tell us about a big annual event that the Second Amendment Foundation holds every single year. Alan, welcome to the show. It's great to be with you again, Cheryl. Absolutely. So talk to us about this big event. What is it called? Well, it's the National Gun Rights Policy Conference, and I think this is the 32nd annual one coming up. Wow. Um, older than some of my, my, most of my children. Uh, this year we're in Dallas, Texas at the Weston Hotel at the, at the DFW Airport. The conference is free for all your listeners who would like to attend. And no, would like to attend. this is an old one. So this year it's in Phoenix on September 20th through the 22nd. Uh, it's the action packed agenda. It starts on September 29th in the evening with the reception and all day Saturday on uh, the 30th and then October 1st on Sunday, they have the day. And all the participants, everybody who shows up, gets about $150 of the free books and pamphlets uh, to take with them for a Second Amendment library, so to speak. We have like 65, 70 speakers uh, that will be speaking. And actually, in fact, agenda it moves very fast. It's basically you overload you with information. And it's who's who in the National Gun Rights Movement, representatives from all the national organizations, so many of the state groups. Uh, everybody that's out there fighting for gun rights, the attorneys who win legal cases, uh, to a lot of media celebrities uh, involved in gun rights media, like you as an example. Uh, and it's really just, uh, uh, it's the gun rights event of the year. I don't know how to say it any other way. And every issue that's going on all year long, we'll discuss and talk about. I'll plan and plot for what's going to happen the next 12-month cycle with what's coming up for the gun rights agenda. 
Well, it is such an amazing event, and I had the just the pleasure and the honor of being able to attend uh, for the past two or three years, uh, ever since you held one here in Phoenix. It was right in my own backyard, and uh, it's, it is a who's who. It is jam-packed with speakers, but yet you do such an amazing job of making it really an intimate gathering as well. So you really can form relationships. You really can network with people that you would normally maybe only see on Fox News or, you know, on their Facebook page, uh, that sort of thing. And it's a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, networking is actually a very big important part of the conference. Uh, and while it does have six to 800 attendees that will be attending it, the important thing is we have, a, you know, breakouts for you know, receptions in the evening, uh, a luncheon, uh, all the food's free, by the way. Uh, people will come just have to really pay for their own hotel expenses to stay at the hotel or traveling to get there. But it's, uh, you get plenty of time to meet the who's who and talk with everybody and meet authors of books on, in, in the gun rights community. Uh, also, every celebrity, basically, the gun rights movement is there, like oh, virtually every year. It's, it, it's a big gathering. It's a place where everybody can, can really make the gun rights movement bigger and more grassroots, which is a really important thing. It's really about boots on the ground to win a, a lot of these battles and struggles that we're up against. And your listeners and viewers can basically uh, uh, register free at this at the Second Amendment Foundation website at saf.org, standoutforfrank.org, and you'll see it pop right up on the screen for the gun rights policy conference. Registration is free. Uh, we'd love to see all your supporters there. Uh, it's just a great place, like you said, to network. Uh, and it, it's really just an important. We're hoping this year it's going to be in Texas. We're hoping that our keynote speaker is actually going to be the governor of Texas, trying to clear his schedule to attend. Uh, and it, 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 he's a great supporter of gun rights. He put a lot of legislation signed into the law in Texas. And Texas is a leading advocate for gun rights in our country. It's one of the reasons why we're having, having it there. Going to be an amazing event, and uh, every year it pumps every, every energy level is way up. You know, I couldn't have said any of that any better than you did. But you keep using this this word free. Like, what is? I've heard that word, but free. All of this is free. How, yeah, how do you understand that? Yeah, it's something the Second Amendment Foundation and the Citizens of Right to Keep Their Arms are co-sponsoring organization does every year. For the gun rights community, uh, it's, it's really important to make it a grassroots space type thing. So it's not about money. Well, we pay for it. We raise dollars from various sponsors for the conference, uh, for the materials we give out. It probably with, with the meals and materials we give out. I mean, it, it, it's probably about a five hundred seven hundred dollar value uh, for every attendee that attends it. Easily, uh, it, it's an amazing event, and uh, yeah, I, I'm just really proud that I was going to have started it all like 30, 32, 32, 33 years ago, uh, and it served a lot of functions in the gun rights movement from getting the national groups working together, getting local groups, you know, expanded and, and sharing information so what happens in work in one state can happen in work in another state. Uh, it, it basically is just, it's just an, an amazing event. And again, we go through all the national legislative things going on. Uh, we'll be dealing with concealed carry issues, uh, you know, rest, national reciprocity. We'll, we'll be dealing with things on the state and local levels around the country and all the hot spots are, in, that are going on, both good, good good things and bad things as well. Uh, we'll deal with all the legal cases that's gone on in the past year in the courts and where we're going in the courts in the next year. A lot of exciting court cases out there. Uh, we'll deal with things on how the media is portraying gun owners and a lot of the fake news out there about gun rights. Uh, you know, we, we put an end to some of that. and. Uh, Meet the media overwhelming covers the conference. There'll be an awful lot of media coming out of this conference as well. Uh, it's probably one of the things that makes the most media for gun rights in the national media every year. It's so true. When you were here in Phoenix, C SPAN actually came out and filmed the entire second day, I believe. Yeah, we're hoping the C SPAN will come and cover it. The second day, which was almost empty, and not the first day, which was almost full, by the way. Again, they don't get to all of our conferences based on scheduling. Uh, last, the one in Phoenix that you attended, uh, one day of it, they had, you know, streamed uh, the whole day uh, on C-SPAN multiple times on multiple C-SPAN channels as well, so it aired a lot of times. And we're hoping we get them again this time. They've been invited to participate and, and do so. So you never know, but we're, we, we try to push it as much as we can. That way we reach lots of people all across the country as well who couldn't attend. Yeah. 
So I understand that this year's theme is make the Second Amendment great again, right? Make the 2A great again. Exactly. Uh, and of course, I think right now, Donald Trump has been doing a very good job of doing that. We sort of stole this Make America Great Again, made, but it's the Second Amendment. Uh, but he's doing a very good job. This was in 2017. This interview was in 2017. Job, uh, so getting rid of a lot of Obama's executive orders that hurt gun rights, putting pro-gun judges on the court, starting with and Neil Gorsuch at the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, and we'll be giving updates on, on, on where the judicial sits with that, on how many open vacancies there are, and who's getting appointed, and how the courts are changing to help protect gun rights. Yes. Well, and, you know, it seems uh, odd to people that maybe are a little on the outskirts of, of dealing with the issues all the time. But, you know, one of our biggest, maybe our absolute biggest enemy right now is apathy. Because people feel like, okay, so we voted in a pro to a president, and I can go have a nap. Hey, I couldn't have said that any better than you just did. Apathy is the biggest problem we're facing right now. A lot of donors think, hey, the battle's over. You have a pro to president. You have a House and Senate that's not going to pass any anti gun legislation. I can go to sleep now. And that's the problem we face. But quite frankly, now it's time to push our agenda forward on the federal level. Get national reciprocity to it, the Green Law Protection Act, other things that help gun, gun rights on the national level. But there's also battles going on in an awful lot of states. Uh, many states are taking offense taking and, and pushing pro gun rights legislation. We also have a lot of battles on the, on, on the horizon here going on. States like California, Oregon, New Jersey, New York, Maryland, Connecticut, Massachusetts, even my home state of Washington. The anti gunners are very active on the state and local level, mainly because they're funded by. Millions and millions of dollars for people like former uh, billionaire Michael, New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg. He's putting a ton of money in. In fact, he, he, he put $25 million in loans to buy us on the federal level this year. And he's putting in $200 million in challenge grants to cities and states around the country to come up with solutions to push gun control legislation and for gun rights. So we have a whole lot to talk about at the Gun Rights Conference when we deal with, with those issues. Oh, we absolutely do. And, you know, if we want to even entertain the idea that, well, we voted the right people in, we gave the GOP uh, all the different branches that we needed them to have so we can just relax. I just want everybody to think about, what was it, a week or so ago when we had the health care bill and we were promised year after year, give us the House, the Senate, the presidency, we'll get rid of Obamacare. And did that happen? That did not happen. So if we think that we can just sit back and say, oh, they're going to vote the way that I want them to for all of our, our gun rights, I think you might want to give that a second thought. Yeah, the other problem we have as well is we're competing against lots of other issues in Congress. You know, Obamacare took up a lot of time for them to deal with it, and it's still not over with. Uh, you know, tax reforms can take a lot of time. The budget bat battles can take a lot of time. Sometimes the gun rights battles fall into second or third or fourth place, and we have to make sure that our congressmen don't leave us, you know, in lurch and run out of time. Now is the time we have to strike, you know, while the iron is hot, so to speak, and make sure that we get our, our, our legislation through. And that's why the gun rights policy conversation may be actually more important than past year here. Absolutely. You know, you help pass along with all your different speakers, pass along some important information so that we can all go back to our individual states and and feel impassioned, feel informed, and get involved or stay involved and, and make sure that we are helping press the vote forward on the things the way, because the, the other side, the anti-rights people, they like to word things in such a way that the average Joe on the street would think, well, what's wrong with that, right? Universal background check, that sounds like, common sense, right? So we have to understand that there is a war of words. We are, we're fighting on a battleground of rhetoric. And so if we don't have our thoughts, uh, you know, clarified, it, I think it, we could easily get kind of sidetracked into, well, let's compromise a little here, right? Let's compromise a little there. And uh, I, that's why I think it's so important important and so vital to us to stay connected with one another uh, because whatever I'm you know very proficient in 
is maybe not something that the next person is and vice versa. So we deal with a lot of issues like that, like, you know, how to frame our issues so that, that the American public looks favorably upon our positions and realizes the other side's rhetoric isn't always honest. You know, they say, universal background checks, so if they're really talking about when you look at the details, it's universal registration. You know, or common sense gun control, which is not common sense at all, and it's not like people who means to defend themselves and their families. So we have to deal with a lot of that when they come up with this, their rhetoric to try and frame it their way. So we have to reframe it in, in, in more of a rights type thing. You know, it's, about, it's not about privileges, it's about rights. Uh, you have a right to have a firearm to defend yourself. You know, and, and all the major court decisions that have been won, have been basically won by the Second Amendment Foundation and our attorneys, uh, you know, who, who fought these cases. And uh, it's really important that you know, keep building upon that with momentum, making sure that everybody understands nuances to how these laws, you know, you know how these court cases impact laws uh, now, presently, and in the future as well. Absolutely. Well, we need to wrap up, but I want you to give everybody the information again about how they can go to this, what was that word you used? Free event in Dallas called the Gun Rights Policy Conference. But I wanted to say, you mentioned that there are a lot of authors there, and uh, I'm holding an entire stack of books that this author, Ali Gottlieb, has either written or co-written. So, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll definitely get to meet at least one author in Ali Gottlieb. Thank you. And those books will be available free at the conference, along with probably a new one that isn't, has, is not in that file yet. That's fantastic. I mean, holy cow. You have a great extra. Again, Cheryl, it's saf.org, Second Amendment Foundation, samalpafrank.org, and register, and please have your people join us. We'd love to meet a lot of your supporters, listeners, and viewers. Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on. And uh, as the day gets near and you start really getting, like, what names, who's going to show up, maybe come on and and talk to us some more about that. I'd love to do that. Somewhere in, in early September, probably. Thank okay. you. Fantastic. Thank you. Alan Gottlieb of the Second Amendment Foundation. Bye-bye. Bye now. All right, so that was Gun Freedom Radio's interview from 2017 with Alan. Two of my favorite people right there. Right here. We're going to plug that right into the port. And uh, through the sensor, it's going to pull up what's wrong. Oh, that's a commercial. Here we go. Ooh. Let's see if anybody's in here. Nope, I'm dead. Go to gun channels, see what's happening. What are you saying that um, New Zealand officials upset over conversion kits going against the spirit of Yeah, spirit of the law. Compliance with the law. All right, so there's... Let's see if it looks all right. All right, kind of looks like them. So I guess I should do this thing with the picture again. Come on, in two minutes. I do a lot of copy and pasting with the names, so I don't have to worry about uh, misspellings or anything like that. Taking a long time. It's glitching. It's glitching. Too much effort for this computer.
So I better save this file. That'd be a good idea. Podcast. Be the ball. That's a problem. Alan Beck, Morgan Sachs, and Sebastian Corka. Or Edwin and Yuda. I already listened to the Yuda one. Let's see this one. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. My phone's about to die, so I'm going to have to play the charge for a little bit. If, uh, if, if you, Dead Horse pops back in, let him know that I'm pretty sure Travis P. Levin postponed his show tonight, so. Oh, he's, he can let yeah. The lobby run a little longer. Travis said he's not doing Caliber Corner anymore for a while. Done. Oh, wow. See, I just, I just got the notification. I haven't watched the video yet. I didn't watch the video, but he's basically... Uh, put, oh, no, I did watch the video, I guess. He's putting it off until he moves, basically. Oh, uh, okay. Cool. Well, I'm charge my battery. I'll be back in a little while. Right on. So we're going to dig into Gun Freedom Radio, episode 145. Be the ball. Only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. If you and I don't do this, then you and I may well spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in America when men were free. And it won't let me drop the link. Welcome to episode number 145 of Gun Freedom Radio, where we engage, we educate, and we inform. We are brought to you by azfirearms.com, your nationwide hometown gun shop. I am one of your hosts, Cheryl Dodd. And I'm the other guy, Dan Todd. Our theme today is Be the Ball. I'll give you a little sign. There's a force in the universe. All you have to do is get in touch with it. Stop things. Let things happen. Be the ball. Yeah, so be the ball and uh unfortunately uh the people that aren't in studio didn't get to hear the great chevy chase uh saying that line from the movie caddy shack so caddy shack is a 1980s comedy about a stuffy snobby golf resort completely upended by a brash and talented golfer played by chevy chase he breaks all the rules purposely goes against the old guard and disrupts their pretentious and swampy ways. So the line, the, the ball, is where Chevy Chase is teaching a young caddy named Danny in a very Yoda-like fashion the secret to his success. He, <laughs> great. <laughs> he tells young Danny to shut out all the noise, focus in on the goal he wants to achieve, and use the force to be the ball. While I was thinking about that phrase, I kept thinking about people who seem to effortlessly be great at what they do. I kept thinking about what elevates them to the very top of their game, their industry, their social sphere, and so forth. And I think that Chevy Chase's character was on to something. He is telling young Danny that how we interact with our surroundings, everything. Where we allow
allow our energy to be pulled and how we practice or train and how we execute our swing is everything. Look at Michael Jordan. He is one of the best NBA basketball players ever. But he had to earn that. And he was up against some serious competition. Through trial, failure, focus, and perseverance, he became the champion that we know him to be. Inside the arena, the way that he interacted with the court, the other players, and the ball is what made him great. And we can draw from all of these elements as we consider how we are, if we are, protecting our constitutional rights and the Second Amendment. So let's take all the elements I just mentioned. There is an arena, a court, other players, and the ball. So how does that relate to those of us who value our constitutional rights? What is our playing field? Well, politics, certainly. But what feeds politics? Culture. And how people view those of us who own firearms. So the modern American culture is our arena. And arenas change over time and in different cities and states where Michael Jordan played, just like our culture has morphed over the years. The individual players he encountered have different styles and personalities, just like the people, neighbors, and friends we encounter in our daily lives. Some are on our team and have varying degrees of commitment and talent. Others are on the opposing team, the rights restrictors and also are varied in their focus and skill. The only things uniform for Michael Jordan were the court and the ball. While in my comparison, our ball would be the Second Amendment, and our court is where we engage the conflict. Are we on the bench, sitting it out, in the stands at least cheering others on? Or are we, like Michael Jordan, and doing everything we can to move that ball toward the goal that our founding fathers intended when they wrote the words, the people is right to keep in their arms, thou not be in vain. Our founding fathers were on the court, fully committed and invested, not just in sweat, but blood taking on a fight that any sane person might have thought was foolish and unwinnable. They fought, they bled, they starved, and they died in the pursuit of freedom and pushing back tyranny. Tyranny that in today's arena, many of us think are just common sense gun laws or red flag gun confiscation laws for safety. How many of our teammates really understand the stakes we are up against? How many feel the siren call to compromise? How many really have the focus and commitment needed to engage and to win? And unlike a game, this, this is about life and death, freedom and tyranny. I found some great quotes attributed to Michael Jordan. He said, I can't accept not trying. He said, talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence, that means championships. He said, some people want it to happen and wish it would happen, but others make it happen. And finally, there is no I in team, but there is a win. If we put in the work individually, but while working as a team, the results will come, and we will win. You can't change what you did or didn't do yesterday, but you can start today. The rights restrictors come out charging with new gun control bills with zero fear that they will face any real opposition. Let's build up our defense with a good offense. Call your elected Officials don't expect the group that you pay annual dues to to do it for you. They certainly don't. But you and I must pick up the phone and call our representatives. We must speak 
with respect, and we must let them know how we would like them to represent us. Issues. Michael Jordan didn't outsource his work, and neither can we. He played on a great team, but he understood the I in win. So, as we pick up the ball and move down the court, we have to shut out the noise of our opponents who desperately want to pull us off our focus. They want us to expend our passions and energies fighting keyboard wars on social media. And they want to convince us that they have already slam dunked the winning point. But we have the bookends, history, legacy on our side. We have our founding fathers on one side and our children and our children's children on the other. Once we make some strategic adjustments to how we interact with the people filling the arena, we will very quickly see the rights of scriptures pick another place to play. Now, they won't ever stop trying to infringe on our rights, but we can convince them that this playing field is just too tough for them. As we shut out all of their names, focus in, our goal of liberty and use the collective force of individual involvement and be the fun. Fair? Well, the advantage of our court and our arena is that the right restrictors are desperate. And you know how when a team gets desperate and they shoot the, they shoot the ball from way past the three point line, mm -hmm. just trying to make that ball. And most of the time they miss, mm -hmm. where the team that really stays hardcore and really drives like the like Jordan guy, all that, <laughs> right? <laughs> <He's got that. laughs> but anyway, so we are, we're driven, yeah. they're desperate. So we just have to hold our stance and we just have to uh, try to, we, we just try, we just play ball. I like that. Sorry, I, I threw Ed off. I was ready for Chevy Chase to say, be the ball, but <laughs> there he is. There he is. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we've, we've got a great lineup of guests today. We have Dr. Sebastian Gorka, an internationally recognized authority on issues of national security, irregular wealth, warfare, and terrorism. Dr. Gorka has served as a strategic advisor to President Trump. He is the author of The Feeding Jihad. And why we fight as a new radio show that debuted, uh, debuted on January 1st, 2019, called America First. Mm -hmm. Then we have Morgan Sachs, director of March 4 on Rights in Washington, D.C., which is a pro Second Amendment student led group. Most, and most recently, she had the honor of speaking to the NRA's outreach committee at their board meeting about how they can increase their student outreach. We also have Alice Bass the lead counsel attorney who litigated the Young versus Hawaii case that recently overturned the complete ban on open carry in the state of Hawaii. Who knew that they had a, a ban hmm. open carry? The Young case clarified and interpreted the Second Amendment to mean that citizens can lawfully carry arms beyond their home. And now, Alan is one of the lawyers who has filed a suit against the bump stock ban. Very interesting. Definitely want to stick around for him. Right. In our second hour, we have Eugene Weaver. He is known as the Pew Pew Jew <laughs> and also the author of Safe Beyond and an introduction to the world of firearms for children. Eugene is a dad with young children and he recently authored a blog about what to do when other parents ask if you have guns in the house. Mm. We also have Dr. Edwin Vera. He is an expert on the United States Constitution, a graduate of Harvard Law School, and a member of the Bar of the Supreme Court of the United States. So, how did you get such a great lineup? We are just super blessed. We know the people that we know. I, I really am so um, thankful uh, to the people that answer their email or their phone and then actually say, yes, I do have the time and I will come on. And, so it's really an incredible uh, thing. We also will have our armed citizen report and guns. Oh, 
stick around. We got much more on this show called <laughs> Be the Ball. All right. Stick around. Back with Cheryl Todd talking about the huge gun buying event at azfirearms.com. Oh, AZ, I get it, as in Arizona. Yes, but. Oh, or AZ, as in everything from A to Z. Well, yes, that too. But what I'm telling everybody about is that azfirearms.com is having a huge gun buying event to buy your old firearms all across Arizona and everything from A to Z. That's great news. See, my grandpa left the old shotgun and it's just sitting on a closet shelf at home. So I can bring that into azfirearms.com and sell my gun? Absolutely. Absolutely. AZFirearms.com buys, sells, trades, and even consigns your old firearms. Any vintage, any style, military, long guns, handguns, hunting, or home protection. Single items or entire collections. We offer the highest value for your used firearms in a safe and friendly environment. Staffed by knowledgeable people. AZFirearms.com is Old Town Avondale off by 10 and Dyson Road. Come on down to the huge gun buying event every day to the end of the month at the biggest little gun shop in Arizona. And for all your firearm and ammo needs, visit AZFirearms.com. I'm Rob Morse from the Self-Defense Gun Stories podcast. Each week we share stories about men and women who saved lives. Now I'm asking you to be a lifesaver as well. The Second Amendment Foundation protects our rights to keep and bear arms. They defend our rights in courts from coast to coast. Today, they need our help. Please go to saf.org and join the Second Amendment Foundation. That's saf.org. Hi folks, I'm Don Carr. If you're looking for the biggest little gun shop in the West, look to azfirearms.com. They have 1,100 guns in stock and a knowledgeable staff to help you find just the right firearm for you. azfirearms.com is my nationwide hometown gun shop. You should make it yours good too. Welcome back to Gun Freedom Radio where we engage, we educate, and we inform. We are brought to you by azfirearms.com, your nationwide hometown gun shop. And we are so excited to uh, talk with our first guest today, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, uh, coming back on again as our guest. It's been a while, but we're so excited to have him back. Dr. Gorka is an internationally recognized authority on issues of national security, irregular warfare, and terrorism. Dr. Gorka has served as a strategic advisor to President Trump, is the author of Defeating Jihad and Why We Fight. He has a radio show that just debuted on January 1st called America First, and welcome to the show, Dr. Gorka. Thank you for having me. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. So this is so awesome that you are, you have such a, a um, ready uh, appearance for the public on Salem Radio. I think this is going to be so important because you just absolutely don't know who to trust anymore. <laughs> you know? And you have experience on your side, and that makes all the difference. Well, it is hard. We do actually live in an age of uh, fake news, but every day, three to six weeks uh, time, you can listen to my show on the State of Radio Network. We're broadcasting all across the country. You can listen live uh, or delayed on our new website, sevstalker.com. That's S-E-V-G-O-R-K-A, sevstalker.com. That is awesome. And uh, is it a, what, what do people expect to find when they, they go there? Do you do interviews?
people who really know what's going on take so many layers of the cleaning out of everything. And it was, I think that's tremendous. And I love the title, of course, America First. So, um, so I wanted to talk to you about a few things. Um, but I think what I want to start is this whole surge that we are seeing towards socialism here in America. I mean, for me, I, at my age, I'm 52, so at my age, the, the generations I've lived through in my lifetime, it's mind-boggling to me. Um, but 52 years is not even that long for people to have somehow gotten amnesia for what work. our <laughs> grandfathers fought for and fought against. Well, not just that. I mean, it's, it's just uh, it's a generation ago when we, we fought the Cold War and we we thought we defeated the ideology of socialism on November 9, 1989, when the Berlin Wall fell. But uh, clearly, as the Ronald Reagan taught us, the loss of liberty is always but one generation away. And there's the sheer fact alone that in the last midterm elections here in America, we had 44 zero Democrat uh, candidates who ran as without socialists. Some of the black. Alexandria Council Cortez actually made it into Congress that tells you that, that you know we have a long way to go. The the brainwashing of the youth has been successful in not large part for the last thirty years. And uh, the the socialist ideology of Karl Marx is, is like a zombie and it's coming back to haunt us. Mm. What do you think? I mean, do you, maybe it's an unanswerable question, but what is this siren call? Like, what is it that appeals to people about socialism that causes them to, like, blank their minds out, if, even if they don't want to learn history, because, you know, it's all the rage right now to ignore history because it was just written by, you know, a bunch of white slave-owning males or something, you know. But uh, we can look at Venezuela. In real time, right now, today, what what do you think it is that, that makes people ignore all of the evidence uh, to how destructive socialism is and, and just want to embrace it like it's it, it's something good? Well, it's a combination of things. I think number one, uh, the people who would want to see socialism have no idea what it really is. They have no experience like my parents who actually uh, have children lived under fascism. Under, under the nasty occupation of their country, and of course, uh, nasty is short for national socialist. So mm-hmm. originally, uh, people like Mussolini and Hitler were left wingers. So they have no idea what that really means the horror, the persecution, the tortures, the gulags, the labor camps. And then, secondly, they just buy into the, the rhetoric of, of Karl Marx, which is utopianism. They think that by shaping humankind, you can create perfection on earth, and then they fall into the trap whereby. The end justifies the means. That there's a reason that the ideology of socialism took 100 million lives mm. in the last hundred years. So I think it's uh, it's ignorance of, of the true cost of this ideology, uh, and I think it's also a, a kind of emotion-based uh, desire for some kind of utopian perfection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the whole emotion-based um, angle of it. I can't remember the exact quote, but uh, you brought up Ocasio Cortez, and she said uh, something about, you know, it doesn't really matter. Facts aren't really uh, what's important. What's important is, you know, kind of the moral uh, authority that somehow she believes she has. (laughs) So it's like, ignore your lying mind. Just just go with what I'm telling you to feel. What's going on, man? You want me to pause it? That's the podcast that's going on right now? Um, yeah, man, I was going to talk to you. I didn't know you were listening to something. Yeah, hold on. We've just been listening to Gun Freedom Radio here. What's up? So Smeggy just jumped into the lobby on the Gun Channel side, and then we're broad- I'm also broadcasting this on the YouTube, doing this uh, cartoon drawing here. Anyway, what's up? Oh, okay, cool. Oh, I thought you had a Yeah, I just uh, saw the, the link on Gun Channels, figured I'd jump in, see what was going on. Are you off? Are you in the middle of something? What's going on? 
no, I'm off today. You got all kinds of uh, tasks to do there. <laughs> no, just gotta take care of the double D. So that's I'm about to let them out right now and go sit outside. So I've been thinking about a new project, uh, a new concept, I guess. Um, unless you got something else to talk about. No, I'm good. What you about? So, like I say, I'd like to hear your perspective on it or whatever. Um, so you've got. So I've been uh, efforting to help people get their you know, value their voice and to get their projects out there or whatever. And then to uh, do that, you know, unless you're independently wealthy, that takes some sort of resources or whatever. And then you get into like a lot of things, what you want to do requires that you have to get outside your comfort zone or do, you know, something else involved with getting to the end goal you were looking for. And what happens a lot of times in this case is if we're talking about content creation, um, funding right so let's say you want to go somewhere you don't have the funds to just go somewhere that can uh, be a, a burden or a issue or whatever so um, and then from the other side there's plenty of um, businesses out there that could uh, use help with you know various levels of different stuff and uh, anyway so I'm thinking of something like an adopt a store slash or like parallel with adopt a advocate and for stuff especially like the gun rights policy conference we got coming up you know there's going to be people that um you know could probably you know do good if they were there or if they were able to experience it or whatever but cost wise you know good luck so um there might be shops out there that are spending money on some kind of advertising or something and maybe doing something like a maybe like a monthly or a yearly membership to an organization or something in order to, you know, protect rights and that. But anyway, so I'm thinking there might be something where we can help stores, gun shops, manufacturers, anybody in the industry who maybe doesn't have the resources of their own to go or the inclination of their own to go or whatever, to hook them up with content creators slash activists, people that do have an interest in going that think they can add something to the conversation and then uh which i say like you know figure out a way to make that happen like if they need i don't know depends on what they need you know depends if it's travel or if it's combinations or if it's cameras or if it's something i don't know and i'm um, thinking that there could possibly be i don't want to call it like a bed and breakfast being you know, like a bed and breakfast website would be it's my easier anyway yeah, no, sorry. I'm here. Um, you know, some sort of uh, thing where, like, somebody can say, well, I've got, a, like, a car you can borrow if you're ever in this town, or I've got, you know, access to this guy's phone number if you need it, or I don't know, stuff besides just money. It's not always just money to get stuff done. Sometimes it's a Rolodex, or sometimes it's a, a couch. You know, like, oh, I need to be there at the gun rights policy conference. I can't afford to buy you a hotel, but you could just crash on my couch. Or I got this, what do they call it, like a mother-in-law's room, like one of those extra houses that are out back. They have those a lot in Arizona. Oh, like a, like a in-law? Yeah, like a nice, it's like, you know, sometimes they'll rent them out even, but like a nicer, it's like sort of like the equivalent of the apartment above a garage back east. Because we don't have garages out here, they'll just put an extra house out back Sort of like a fancy shed, really, except it's got plumbing and electric and everything. Yeah. Yeah, out here they do like a studio apartment in the garage and on the regular house in the front half of it. Yeah, exactly. So, like I'm saying, the, the, uh, somebody might have a room like that or something. And then, or again, maybe like, oh, I got this extra car and I know you, I trust you, you can use my car, you don't have to rent a car. And now that makes a, a trip doable for somebody, maybe. I don't know. So I'm just trying to think of maybe some like an exchange, uh, resource exchange type of thing. Uh, and then again, so that shops can think outside the box a little bit and figure out like, hey, you know, this is a valid contribution that this person's putting out there. And like, here's a way to make that happen. And now that person doesn't have to dull their message down to some boring garbage to try to sell you something. 
anyway, just thinking about it. I'm trying to figure out, you know, now we're into 60 days till the event, how to actually make it happen. Because I guess the thing is, you know, let's say you want to create content or whatever and blah, 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 and that's great, but you don't have the resources to get there. What do you also got to be a salesman now? What do you also have to monetize your content? Yeah, also have, you know, what if you're not making content that's monetizable or if you don't have views or whatever? But you having a camera there is better than having an empty seat there. You've been to a Come Rights Policy Conference. Like, isn't anything better than those empty seats on Sunday? Oh, for sure. You know, and if you're going there with intent, you're not going to go there on Saturday and not go Sunday. And maybe if you do, then that's how, a, a, a you know, that's how we learn and we figure out, okay, this didn't work or that doesn't work for that company. Um, I can't deal with this one anymore. Does it look good enough to go or is it really bad? Can you see the screen? Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Like I say, if I don't know the people, I can just whip it out. When I know them, I cannot finish it because it does not, it looks goofy to me, but I'm going to leave it because I'm not trying to be an artist. I am just trying to get a project accomplished. So uh, anyway, so um, anyway, that's, I was just going to put that out there in do, case. Do you it could. without the outlines. Without the outlines? They always look creepy without the outlines. <laughs> They always, they always look like Picasso pictures or something without them. But with without the colors, they're coloring books. Except that looks like some kind of evil World War II dictator or something. He looks like his, his mustache looks all goofy like a Italian dictator <laughs> without the color. Because it looks like his mustache is up where his nose is. Yeah. Um, I just thought I'd throw it out there. And whoever's listening, uh, if that's something you can... Uh, Rassle around in your head and come up with something. Oh, did you did you just get here or have you been watching for a while? No, I just got here. So this is guy Garrett. Dropped 20 bucks. Thanks again. Uh, to the chat earlier. Let me read you some of the correspondence going back and forth on the YouTube side. So um, he says, my work will pay for all my college, but I only have a list of schools to pick from. Is there any degree I could get that later could be applied to help with the Second Amendment in my free time. Because I can get any degree, I can get any degree, but the business, the job will pay for the school itself. Um, he says he works for Boeing, so it's fully paid. He can leave after the degree. Like, so that's part of his current employment thing is that he's getting this, this, this education. So he can just plain get the education and walk. Or, if he gets an education in a, in a, if he gets a degree in something that can apply at Boeing, he can stay and make a bonus after four years and make a big bonus after six years. So um, then he says, um, um, we were chatting about stuff and we went off into lawyer and some other stuff. But then he says, uh, well, once we found out about Boeing, we kind of came, have, came back from lawyer. He says he kind of currently does uh, some 3D printing classes on weekends, and uh, and they pay for weekend classes and degrees. So he can pretty much get any kind of up training he wants. If he gets something that applies to his place of business, he'll get big bonuses for sticking around for like four or six years. And then he wants to do something ideally that strategically will give him skill set that he can use for Pro 2A in his off time. So I think you've got maybe more insight than some on where he might go. And then the other question I asked the guys that were in here before, what would you do if you were back looking at the other side of a degree? Which way would you go? Or would you choose differently or that kind of question? Hmm, that's an interesting one. Well, I'll start with the second one first. I would still get the same engineering degree I got. I don't, I don't think I would change anything there. But as for what someone else should do, yeah, man, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> what does he like to do? I mean, that's that's the big thing. It, you know, if you can do something that you stay with the company, get a bonus, then that's good for him. You know, go. But if he hates doing it, then well, maybe do else. take the person out then. So think of it as like, what could a person do that is 
a job, but then also, you know, would apply to, or the, the skill set that they do for that job would apply to Second Amendment. So without thinking of advice for an actual person who we know, kind of, and, you know, we're not trying to give advice to a, a young, but just if you're just theoretically talking about what kind of jobs would work for both. Hey, get out of there. Um, hmm. I think the best for the Second Amendment is like a political science kind of thing, you know, as far as getting into government or that's really the, that's the way to go. Is if we just had a whole bunch of senators and stuff that were all pro 2A, we'd be good to go. I can't think of a job at Boeing that would help with that. Well, like we were saying, there's probably a ton of lawyers or whatever. Like, you know, they probably have a lot of lawyers. Trying to think of stuff that, yeah, would help the Second Amendment. I mean, you could have any type of office kind of job would be useful. You know, go work for a pro 2A group as an accountant or something. Or oh, I didn't even think of it that way. I was saying, like, pretty much anything you might like as a job could be useful because as an advocate of the second, like, you'd always have that positive influence, right? So no matter what it might be, you'd be there to be like, oh, no, that's crazy. Have you thought about it from this way? But I never thought about like the like using the skill sets directly for an organization. Like you just said, like that's that makes sense. Then yeah, just plain old the basics. And honestly, probably some of them bookkeeping kind of classes and stuff. Not for this guy because yeah, so, he's already got an engineering thing. But for like regular kid just looking at a billion different opportunities, those business classes like every company needs an account. It doesn't matter what the company is, right? Right, and even just business in general, you know, be an entrepreneur type thing, and that's a little bit of everything. But especially now, let's, let's go back with the dude who's got some type of engineering or technical type skills, and if you go invent something, well, then you still have to learn how to market it and sell it, and all those types of skills are pretty useful. And then you're kind of selling the Second Amendment. You know, you, you've learned market research and you've learned, you know, the, the psychology of dealing with the general public. And then on, on your day job, you can use it to sell some new widget that's awesome. Yeah, again, it applies to anybody who's in a competitive market that doesn't just you know, get customers, right? Night Strike is saying CNC. Remember this guy? Night Strike is saying experience. Uh, he does this show on Wednesdays. Uh, CNC experience oh, okay. could get you a job at any gun manufacturer. That might be, well, maybe not any, depending on if they're hiring, but yeah, I would think that skill set would be useful for any anybody making metal or any kind of plastic, really. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still stuck on this, uh, you know, night punch guy or something, or e evening, evening punch. Um, I evening think, slap. Is that always infringed? Evening slap. Yeah, he's definitely a pro-infringement advocate, I think. Yeah, it's, okay, he's coming back Here's to the now. thing. Like, Here's the thing. His, po infringed, his, like position, his position is so unclear. It's so un unconcise, inconcise. Not the right right but yeah it's really difficult to make heads or tails of it i just don't know where he lands on things sometimes e evening slap i think that's what it was yeah e e evening slap some infringements are required some infringements are okay and then he kind of shrugs like <laughs> some infringements hey got there but wait, wait was that an infringement Yes. Ziggy ain't, Smeggy ain't standard for it. Yeah, no, I 
I am fringe heavily on this dog. That's a no ball zone. Because criminals take a ball in there and they destroy the flowers. You're not allowed to have a ball in there. Unfree, it's a ball free zone. If a bowling ball were to slam around in there, it would be bad for the garden. So you can't have a ball in there. So you can't have any ball, period. And you're lucky we don't take your ball away in the house. You can have your ball in the house, but not out here in the yard. Oh, no, he's, he's talking all kinds of lip service. You don't listen to uh, Liberty Doll by any chance? I've, I've seen a little bit of her, but not a lot. So she's a, uh, I guess she, she's a self-proclaimed libertarian or she's libertarian-ish. I guess I don't know. I don't want enough first stuff to know her actual positions on everything, but she's definitely pro 2A. So where am I at? This is, well, I'm picking the wrong one. Um, I posted this thing earlier today. I don't know where the, where it is in here, but she's summarizing the, uh, the debate right it's actually right at the end of the gun part so am i going to be able to find the end of the gun part you're quite right we have a new vision for america and remember this is coming from the guy that told people to shoot shotguns in the air for self-defense thinking that it would sound advice as for the rest of the debate, so this is the this summary. That was a bang. It made me wonder if they were out for Bernie blood again this election cycle or what. No, I think it's before this. So this is towards the end of the gun section. So she did a forty-five minute. Okay, perfect. I found it. So um, she she takes the however long the debate was an hour or something maybe two hours I think. And then summarizes it in 45 minutes, which, you know, she digs into a bunch of the pieces of it, so that takes a while. She puts all the gun stuff at the beginning, though. So the first seven minutes is all the gun stuff. So uh, here is the end of the gun thing. And uh, I think this is hilarious. Okay. Also supports a buyback of all those guns, which I'm assuming means the fictitious assault weapon. And says that Americans have the right to demand that. All I don't know where to cue it up, so this part's just a summary of some guy's if position. Right, under free speech, Americans can demand whatever the hell they want. Doesn't mean that it's logistically sound or that they'll actually get it. It's just lips flapping in the wind. <laughs> I love that. Lips flapping in the wind. So that's what you've got happening on the gun channels or on the YouTube site right now. Got some lips flapping out there. Let's see if I can screen share. Okay, yeah, because I'm on my phone, so I don't really have... Oh, he retracted it. Oh, it's his lips flapping has been retracted. He's seen it coming, and he retracted it. It had to do with a snowman and melting, and there was water everywhere. It was it was lips smacking in the wind, for sure. Oh, okay. All right, so for anybody that's joined... The difference in, is he needs... Oh. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say that there was he needs to remember I still know where he lives. So he he can talk all the smack he wants, but come knocking on his door one night. I can't find it. I used to have this stuff queued up. <laughs> there. I'll just edit that back into where it sounds appropriate time wise. Thora was out on the, what side are you on? You are on the gun channel side. So here's what's going on. Right now, I am in two live hangouts at the same time because I cannot get enough live action. So Dead Horse is live on gun channels, and Smeggy is joining us in there. I don't know if Dead Horse is back and forth. He runs the room. Uh, he posts the room, I should say, and then uh, allows people to uh, jump in and out. So it looks like Night Strike just dumped in and Smeggy's in here. And I'm also broadcasting live on my channel. And I've been drawing some two-way activists. Uh, we drew Yuda and then Masada Yub and just now Rob Pincus. These are people that um, were chosen by uh, people that are supporting my projects, gun websites and gear websites, 
uh, they they sponsored these drawings over on the gear website store. So in an effort to be creative and figuring out ways to fund the projects that I'd like to do, I created a, a thing over at the store here where you can sponsor a cartoon. Um, I mentioned earlier in the show when I first started my broadcast here that I'm building this project over at uh, Minuteman University where we are striving to offer skills and resources for advocates. So the skills side, we can talk about all we want if we want, but the resource side is what I'm talking about right now. And uh, as part of the resources, we've got our history. So the 2A history project is all intertwined with all this. When, it, when we try to think about our 2A history, it can get pretty complicated and confusing. So I'm attempting to do some different things to, to archive it and to put it into relation with each other including something like this drawing here that I hope illustrates what I'm trying to do. So not specifically this, but using uh, some of the elements we'll talk about here in a second, I'm gathering resources and some of those are activists. So there's lots of people out there throughout our history that have been working towards maintaining and keeping infringements away from our second amendment and knowing who came before us allows us to stand on their shoulders and not repeat whatever they efforted towards. And it also allows us to appreciate their successes and understand their failures so that we don't repeat uh, the failures and that we don't discourage or dismiss their successes. Uh, no real reason for this. I don't have a recipe or a, a, a instructions. I just am trying to uh, uh, gather as much to a history as I can so that we can start to put it in different ways to relate it. So as we went through the activists here, you saw a lot of them are already cartoons. This is I've been able to do this thanks to the help of our Patreon supporters, the people that financially keep our projects online. Uh, I sneak time here and there and uh, we draw these cartoons in live chat sometimes. And uh, let's see what this person in New York wants. It's important. This is Top Health. What? We offer affordable health insurance from oh. A plus rated insurers. It's amazing. Prices that you so uh, the cartoons allow me to keep some consistency. If I'll flip over to this instructors one I've been working on uh, the other night um, when you just have images in here they're very inconsistent you start out with black and white sometimes not even images you know just like drawings or sketches or something of people you get the black and white you get the old grainy colors you get the modern stuff and you know, a lot of times it's designed for the web so it'll be really nice and then you get these snapshots so in order to give some consistency and some like balance or whatever the word is like maintain some uh, some uh, uniformity with the images Continuity. thanks uh, I'm doing the cartoons. I also have the opportunity then to talk about the software. Like right now, I haven't talked about it yet today, but I'm using Adobe Illustrator. I've been using Adobe Illustrator thanks to a friend out there for 40 bucks a month, and I've been able to do that for more than a year. They just changed it to 60 bucks a month, which is beyond my budget. So I'm going to get rid of Adobe and save that 60 bucks a month. This will be the last month I use Adobe. So I've been showing people how to use the Adobe software, but now we'll be able to uh, have the opportunity to show everybody how to use free software again. Uh, so that's part of the, the goal here is not just to archive some 2A history, but ideally to do it in front of people so that anybody who's out there interested in doing this can at least see the process, but ideally jump on board, value your voice and be part of this. If you look at this diagram I've been using for an example, for example, uh, you know, this is trying to relate some of the organizations and when they were begin when they began based off of the uh, massive infringements at the federal level, like the 1934 NFA, the 68 Gun Control Act, the Firearms Owners Protection Act, which gave us the Hughes Amendment, uh, the 94 ban, assault weapons ban and others. And then you can kind of see some relationship to when the organizations were necessary, you know, to battle the infringement. So uh, anyway, to uh, kind of build on all this or whatever and build in the cartoons and I'm trying to uh, to gather this stuff. So I uh, set up a, a thing over here on the store. There's a whole bunch of people you can pick from basically that come from these lists of people that are not yet cartooned. And again, I'm just... I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm building stuff so that we can learn from it. Ideally, uh, one goal is to have it all here on the internet in one place. The internet uh, does a backup every once in a while. So as this stuff is accumulated and backed up, it'll be permanently on the internet. So even if I can't ever complete this, 
somebody can pick it up a lot easier. It's taken me hours to gather some of this info and put it in one place. The next person can take it and do better from this, in, you know, from this effort. Uh, so part of it is to um, to get some uh, uh, better pictures in here, and then also a way to uh, sponsor what we're doing. Because you know, anyway, so I'm going to do it live here. Show you how to work it here so that you can. Uh, do your own projects better, do your own 2A efforts. Uh, part of it is to gather the resources here so that we have them. Another part is just to learn the history, right? So we're doing this live. We can talk about the individuals and stuff. And anyway, that's enough introduction. You know, we been watching this. This was mainly for people that might be watching it in the future. I tell you what, though, I've done three of them here, and that was the three I planned to do today. So I'm going to drop the Hangout on the gun website side say thanks to the people that joined us over there and I'll have to then I can quit dominating the lobby chat and I go back to being a lobby chat so if you do want to join in and be on the panel here and chat with Night Strikes Maggie Dead Horse and I head over to Gun Channels it's a community built for conversations like this built for collaboration built so that we don't have to depend on the platforms that that suck our uh, our, our our content they, they, they require us to reach for the masses that requires the content to turn vanilla that requires the content to appeal to so many people that it's not doesn't have any flavor anymore so uh, gun channels is a uh, resistance to that and it's hopefully uh, a gate to whatever's next on the web so if you're interested in all that if you're if you value all that head over to gun channels be part of it you certainly don't get a, a roller coaster ride uh, it's not a, an easy chair uh, it's designed to be a set of tools so grab uh, your computer, roll up your sleeves, grab a phone, and uh, be part of the conversations. That's enough of that. I'll end the gun websites ch chat here, and we'll go back to having a regular lobby over on gun channels. The guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching gunwebsites.com. <laughs>